if you do that, your genitals have to be stinky because only someone with stinky genitals would do something stupid like that. <laughs> OMG y'all, hello what's popping, my name is Happy Back Legends and thank you so much for clicking on this video, yes, so today I'm filming something that I've really been wanting to film for like weeks. This video idea has sort of morphed and changed. What I ended up doing was just kind of taking all my ideas and bringing them into one video. So this video might be long, I'm going to do my best to try to keep it within 20 to 30 minutes, I'm hoping it doesn't exceed that. Um, but I did, I've been spending a long time on this video doing the research and I think this is going to be a good video and so I want to make sure that even if it is longer than 30 minutes I do put all the information that I've collected about this topic into this video. Um, I also just want to be clear, if you're a white vegan, um, please don't send this to like your one black friend, okay? Like don't do that please um, because number one, I'll hate you for it. Number two, it's hella cringe. You're giving hella cringe energy. Number three, um, you're giving colonizer energy. Number four, if you do that, your genitals have to be stinky because only someone with stinky genitals would do something stupid like that. But anyways, child, so what are we going to be talking about today? Well, we're going to be talking about the history of black people and veganism. But we're also going to be talking about why black people make such good vegans. We're going to be talking about historically vegans around the world and vegetarians around the world and how long they've been doing this kind of shit. And I'm also going to talk about black activists um, who've been vegan for decades, who we look to as leaders in our community. And I think that those people are the perfect people who've made the connection between like oppression and liberation and big ideas like that. And I think it's really important that we acknowledge the fact that these people are also vegans and or vegetarians. Well, not and or, or vegetarians. Um, because like I said, it, it ties in together the framework of their activism, which is anti-oppression, pro-liberation. And it's really interesting, especially to see people who were working during you know, major, major historical movements in our culture and in our community, things like working with Dr. King, things like working with the Black Panthers. So I'm really excited to get into the meat and potatoes, vegan meat and potatoes of this video. <laughs> and, but before we get started, I just wanna say this video is sponsored. Yes, this video is actually sponsored by my patrons over at my Patreon. Um, thank you guys for being badass bitches and for supporting my work. Um, if you would like to be a badass bitch as well, the link for my Patreon is down below. I will also probably put it in the pinned comments as well. Um, if you wanna be a bad bitch but you're on a budget, you can also become a YouTube member. My YouTube memberships are only 99 cents per month. Um, it is just an extra way to support my work. No pressure or anything, even if you can't financially support me, liking my videos, commenting, sharing them, that is also support and is really, really appreciated as well. So finally, we are going to get into it. So the first topic, also I just want to be clear, um, there will be a table of contents and timestamps and all that jazz if you do want to skip around from topic to topic. And if there's a topic that I'm going to address that doesn't interest you, you can skip around, feel free to do that. But first of all, I wanted to address the history of more so vegetarians, not fully vegan, but vegetarians of color around the world globally, because I think this is a really important topic when discussing veganism. I think a lot of us, we have this idea of veganism as weird white hipsters from Los Angeles who are freaks and are really out of touch with themselves and with other people. And I completely understand why that narrative has been spread, it makes sense to me, but I think that that's really incorrect. And I I think that it's almost it, it's it well it's ignorant number one but it is kind of offensive to these cultures and to these people that have been eating vegetarian for centuries whether it's due to like I mentioned their cultures their religions or their philosophical beliefs I think it's important to acknowledge these vegetarians of color that have been doing this shit for centuries okay um, it's not new it's been here for a while and it's probably gonna stay here for a while the future is looking more and more vegan every day to be honest so you know why don't you jump on this train that was convincing <laughs> so 
First of all, I wanted to address this quote that I got from, I believe it was The Guardian. Her name is Nicola Cagaro, and she is a chef. And she cooks for this group of like female like soldiers who go after like poachers and they all eat vegan. They're called the Akashinga and they're in Zimbabwe, I believe. And she said, and I quote, um, it is important to spread veganism around Africa because it originated in Africa. Our ancestors didn't eat as much meat. It is through colonization that we learned these crazy meat eating practices. So when I think of African vegan food, I think of a lot of Ethiopian food. I think of injara, I think of rice, I think of lentils. I think of really, really warm, good soups and stews and dishes that are seasoned and flavorful. And moving slightly away from Africa, we have the Ital diet, which is followed by the Rastafarian people. This diet is all natural. There's a lot of rules to this diet. They don't eat meat, although some will eat fish. However, there's a lot of rules surrounding how they have to clean the fish and prepare the fish. And most Rastafarians will just opt out of eating fish entirely. They don't consume alcohol, no cigarettes, and no drugs. But apparently herbs and plants are not considered drugs. So I wanted to address these diets because these diets have been around for centuries. People have been eating this way. There's actually, it's actually not that hard to veganize a lot of foods. I live in California and so I grew up consuming like Mexican food and Mexican food is actually, in my opinion, very easy to veganize. Lentils, rice, tortillas, you got corn, you got cabbage, you got carrots, you have all sorts of like amazing seasonings and flavors, you got chili powder, you got your onion powder, you got your garlic salt, um, so there's just so much things you can do, you got, oh my god, how the fuck could I even forget cilantro and green onions, like what the hell am I even talking about right now? My point is, there's a lot of vegetables in a lot of ethnic cultures, and it's really not that hard to veganize your favorite foods that you have been in your life, in your culture, for a really long time, you know what I mean? Now, I want to move towards Asia and India. We're going to talk about Taoism, Buddhist, Hindus, and Jainism. Sikhs, I forgot to mention Sikhs. Oftentimes these people are vegetarians, however it does not outwardly state that you have to be vegetarian in order to follow these um, religious ideologies and beliefs. However, most of these people who do follow these religions tend to stick to a vegetarian diet. I used to work at a hotel right near Disneyland and so it was really common for me to have to make vegetarian um, sandwiches for uh, people from all around the world and it was really interesting I would get in conversations with them about their religion and about their culture and Actually last week when I was moving I was at this boba shop and we went to Waba Grill and I was outside with my friend and this girl was like staring at me turns out she was actually Indian and she was vegetarian and she saw my face mask which says go vegan Do I have it? Oh, yeah This is my face mask from my Teespring store and it says go vegan on it and so she saw it and was like she wanted to spark up a conversation, but she didn't know how and so we started talking and it was really really cool to Like hear her perspective on being a vegetarian, you know, because she was like I've never eaten meat in my culture She didn't specify if she was like Sikh or if she was Hindu I don't know, but she said I'm Indian and in my culture we don't eat meat uh, in my religion We don't eat meat and I've never eaten meat and I was like, oh my god She's like I do eat dairy and stuff like that and we just had a really really good conversation and we both got like the tofu bowl so it was kind of funny because what happened was we both reached for the tofu bowl and that's how I ended up realizing she was vegetarian. Anyways, child, my point is um, there are cultures and religions that have literally been eating vegetarian for centuries. This isn't new. And to ignore that, I feel like it's so ignorant, it's kind of offensive. We really should be listening from these people. We should be taking their recipes, okay? Well, not taking them, but you know what I mean. Like, <laughs> we should be using their recipes. I want to address um, the Mexican-American labor and human rights activist Cesar Chavez, who is a vegetarian, which I never fucking knew that. When I was so shocked to learn that he was a vegetarian, that completely blew me away. And I wanted to read some of the quotes that he said about vegetarian before I move on to my next topic because I think what he had to say was really beneficial. We cannot hope to have peace until we respect everyone, respect ourselves, and all living beings. Racism, econo economic deprival, dog fighting and cock fighting, bull fighting and rodeos are all cut from the same defective fabric violence. We cannot defend and be kind to animals until we stop exploiting them. Exploiting them in the name of science, exploiting them in the name of sport, exploiting them in the name of fashion, and yes, exploiting them in the name of food. There is an interconnectivity, like Caesar mentioned, with oppression and liberation and economic, economic deprival, which we're going to get more into. So, my next topic is, why do black people make such great vegans? 
this portion of the video, I'm partially trying to convince you to go vegan, but if you're black, but also I want to show you that black people are kind of spearheading the movement and we have been for decades. I mean, we've been out here doing the damn thing. Are we really that surprised? I just want to be clear that there are more black people in the US that are vegan than there are actually white people. Black Americans are almost three times more likely than white Americans to go vegan. Black people, I believe, 8% of black Americans are vegan, whereas only 3% of white Americans are vegan. Um, all my sources and citations will be linked down below, by the way, if you want to check out any of this information for yourself, I would highly encourage you to do so. There is a huge Afro-vegan movement, and this movement has history. And there's a long line of black activists who've been doing this thing for decades. And a lot of what they've been addressing is the fact that Black people in our community, I feel like a lot of us have a disconnect from what we put on our plate. I feel like eating disorders in the black community are really rampant and this is something that we don't talk about because eating disorders are a white girl disease. And that's really unfortunate because honestly, a lot of a lot of us simply do not know how to eat and a lot of us don't think about what we're putting on our plates. Black people are, I believe, one of the highest groups of people to have preventable diseases related to food. And in my opinion, I think that's really devastating. I think that's so unnecessary. Let's look at something that a lot of us have issues with. Dairy. Black people are extremely fucking lactose intolerant, okay? I believe it's something like 70 to 80% of us cannot properly digest dairy. That number even goes up higher for Asian people. This is extremely problematic. Think about it. Our government is telling us to ingest dairy yet a lot of us, our bodies physically cannot digest it. Why are they pushing something that makes us sick, makes us throw up, gives us the runs, gives us bubble guts, all sorts of damages and disease, damage and disease, z diseases to our body. Why are we listening to our government telling us to consume something that makes us sick? It makes no sense. And I feel like one of the things that makes black people go vegan is that connection to dairy. Because a lot of us are like, hey, yeah, dairy does make us sick. At the time, my intention was not to go vegan, but I gave up dairy back in like 2017, 2018. And I did it because I was extremely lactose intolerant and it got to the point where it was like, I am sitting on the toilet for two hours after eating a bowl of ice cream. This really isn't worth it. There's almond milk ice cream. Now, uh, and that was in 2017, 18. Now there's like oat milk ice cream and pea protein ice cream. There's, and fucking coconut milk ice cream. There's way more options than there was back in 2018, 17 when I was doing that shit, okay? And I think one of the reason why a lot of us make that connection between dairy is because black people, I feel like it's not that shocking to us that our government would lie to us. Like I feel like a lot of us would, aren't surprised that our government would lie to us for profit or for their own benefit without any care for the people that they're preaching these ideologies to, you know what I mean? Um, there's so many ways to veganize, like, food. And I feel like black people are amazing cooks. And I feel like it really would not be hard for us to teach ourselves how to veganize our favorite foods. One of my goals with this channel is going to be sharing more recipes, more what I eat in a day, what I eat in a week videos, to show people what a normal, healthy, balanced, mostly whole food plant-based, but also some vegan junk food um, diet looks like. The amount of things you can do with chickpeas and beans alone, chickpea pizza, chickpea salad, chickpea cookies, just cook them up, put them in an air fryer. I mean, there's so much shit you can do, you know what I mean? I feel like black people, we're really good at making that connection um, between oppression, discrimination, and bodily autonomy. The truth of the matter is currently with big um, agriculture, big ag, animal agriculture, meat and dairy industry, big ag, these animals have like no rights, like let up, dead ass no rights. They're bred into a system that seeks to exploit their bodies and that's it. They're disposable. They're left to die and sometimes they're just killed if they're no longer useful. It's a devastating system filled with trauma and abuse. And I feel like black people, it's easy for us to make that connection to that evil system. I went from plant-based to vegan when I finally sat down and watched like Dominion, okay? Like seeing, you know, baby cows being separated from their moms 
and watching cows be forcibly impregnated multiple times within their lifespan and knowing that a lot of these animals that we eat and use for clothing and fashion and makeup a lot of these animals aren't even living to their full capacity they're not living to their full lifespan that's like tragic and terrifying in my honest to god opinion and for me personally i asked myself i said how can i claim to be an advocate how can i claim to be politically you know aware how can i claim to want to be more politically involved and to care about oppression if i am continuing to take part in a system that is so oppressive it just didn't make sense to me eating vegan is one way to just have a protest three times a day it's a huge fuck you to the government it's a huge fuck you to capitalism it's an anti-oppression pro-liberation movement and i think for me when i finally made that connection it was so easy to go vegan because i'm someone that does care about human rights and if i'm able to care about human rights why can't i also extend that care to animals as well it wasn't hard for me once i finally made that connection it took me a while to make that connection but once i made it okay i'm vegan to be fair i was already plant-based once i made that connection between animal oppression and abuse it was so easy for me to finally go vegan i feel like as black people we are amazing organizers and there's so much power in learning about nutrition and learning about the different kind of foods that you can eat in gathering together to do community composting and gardening urban gardening i feel like is the coolest fucking shit and i feel like it's the future and i feel like we really need to be encouraging it way more gardening in general it it like feeds your soul like i have a little composting bin and i really don't know what the fuck i'm doing okay but it feels good to not waste my food it feels good to learn more about the earth and it feels really good to watch something that i basically started from scratch and is changing and it's actually doing the damn thing you know that's really cool next topic that i want to go into is black activists who've been doing the damn thing for decades okay i think the erasure of black people especially black women because that was i have housemates <laughs> because that was one thing i think when doing research for this that had me like the most shook was the amount of black women that we've learned about in school that are actually vegan or vegetarian so the first black activist that i'd like to mention is a woman by the name of tracy mccorder she's been vegan for over 30 years she created the first um how to go vegan starter guide for black people which i will link down below if you would like to check it out um, I wanted this video to be up like in the beginning of February because I wanted to be like, hey, it's February, Black History Month, Veguary, go vegan. But I didn't want to rush this video. So despite this being out almost like a week and some change into February, if you it's never too late. It's really never too late. So feel free to check out the link if you would like to. Um, she's a nutritionist and a community organizer. One of the people that she credited as helping her go vegan was, the, was uh, a man by the name of Dick Gregory. Dick Gregory is a um, hugely famous, was, excuse me, a hugely famous activist, comedian, and human rights activist and organizer. Um, he was well known. Um, he worked with Dr. King and he's had a lot to say about being vegan. He actually wrote a whole book called Dick Gregory's Natural Diet for Folks Who Eat Cooking with Mother Nature. I want to read this book, but it's like a hundred dollars. Holy shit, 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 shit. It's being re-released um, this June, actually, so I might buy it then. And he has a quote that I really, really wanted to read. He said, under the leadership of Dr. King, I became convinced that nonviolence meant opposition to killing in any form. That's really important, and I completely agree with that. The next black activist that I want to mention, who was actually vegetarian for over 40 years, was Rosa Parks. I cannot believe that she was vegetarian. Um, she said that giving, giving up meat wasn't that difficult for her. She also was able to make that connection between nonviolence and eating meat. And she was, like I mentioned, a vegetarian for over 40 years, and she was known to have loved to recycle. Next person I'd like to mention is Coretta Scott King and her son, Dexter Scott King. Dexter actually persuaded his mom to go vegan in 1995, which is crazy to me. I can't imagine being vegan in 1995. Like, I, I can't imagine that. 
Like, because most of my diet is whole food plant-based, okay? So I eat a lot of tofu, I eat a lot of rice, I eat a lot of chickpeas, I eat a lot of potatoes, I eat a lot of oatmeal and oats, a lot of rice, I already mentioned rice, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fruits. So I do, like, I can see myself eating those foods, like, in the past, but like, where would I be able to find my gluten-free soy sauce? Where would I get my, like, Daya cheese and my Daya cheesecake. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't imagine being vegan in 1995. The next black activist that I want to talk about. First of all, the more I learn about this person, the more obsessed I've become. Um, I really, really want to start reading their books. Like, I need to get a poster. I need a t-shirt. There's stuff that I need to do, okay? And this is motherfucking Angela Davis, okay? Angela Davis is vegan. Angela Davis is vegan. I want to like scream this from the top of like every rooftop. I want to run around yelling, Angela Davis is vegan. I, I don't know why, but when I found that out, I thought that was literally the coolest fucking shit. Like, oh my God, this Black Panther activist, someone that I've been learning about like my whole life, someone that I've always known about is vegan and has been vegan for a while. Like, holy shit. She, I think is one of the people like on this list that I think makes really strong cases for veganism. Bad bitch, multilingual queen, vegan, what's not to love? The next person on this list, I'm not too sure if you actually have heard of him, um, but when I think about people that have helped me in my vegan journey, I definitely think of him. A lot of his talks on veganism and the intersectionality aspect of it really resonate well with me, especially, you know, me being an activist and a political blah 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 So Christopher Sebastian is an intersectional pro-liberation activist and educator. He has a ton of videos out on YouTube that you can go ahead and watch. Um, intersectionality is a term coined by Kimberly Crenshaw, a law professor who's been studying race and civil rights for over 30 years. Intersectionality has sort of been co-opted and stolen. The whole point of intersectionality in its truest form was to recognize that someone who is at the intersection of two marginalized identities is going to face discrimination on a different and more devastating level than someone who isn't at that intersection. This was meant to be used in the terms of black women specifically. Um, so like perfect example, I as a black woman, as a dark skinned black woman, is going to face different challenges in life than a white woman or a light-skinned woman. Um, so that's that conversation. Like I said, it has been co-opted in different movements to describe different things, um, but that is what it means its original term. And when applied to veganism, I feel like what that means, and like I mentioned earlier, is if you're anti-oppression, if you fight for the rights of marginalized groups, I think she's good. If you fight for the rights of marginalized groups, that should include animals. And it took me such a long time to make that connection, like because I've I've been involved in like leftist spaces for a while. As you guys know, I've worked in politics. I've done all sorts of weird political things, okay? And um, I would always look at animal like rights activists and vegans, and I go, those people are nuts. Like those people are nutty. I don't. Those people are crazy. I don't get it. And like. But once I made that connection, I was like, damn, like, why did it take me so long to make that connection? <laughs> you know, but that's okay. It's the system. It's the life. It's the world that we're born into, unfortunately. Eating animals and using them for profit is so normalized. The next and last final topic of this video is going to be black vegans today. Black singers, athletes, politicians, people that are vegan or vegetarian. Obviously these bastards are all rich and so they can afford nutritionists and they have nice big bowls of whatever, but maybe you can get inspired and rework recipes. I'm kind of a creative person, so looking at a recipe and me realizing that I don't have some of those ingredients doesn't just stop me from making that dish entirely. That's me personally. But I totally understand why people might be afraid because cooking can be scary, but 
it's really fun. Tabitha Brown, obviously, hello, hello, hello. Beyonce, I don't really know if she's like actually vegan or plant-based still, but she has been giving grants to black vegan owned businesses and things like that. And I think that's hella sick. Chloe and Haley, which what the fuck? I completely didn't know that. Like go stream Ungodly Hour, like extra hard now. Like <laughs> go stream streams Ungodly Hour, but in a vegan way. <laughs> this next person on my list, I wasn't surprised that she was on here. Erica Badu is vegan. I want a rim shot, ay, a diggy diggy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Erica Badu is vegan. Are we surprised? And she's spoken on how veganism connects to her spirituality and her vitality. And I mean, I was not surprised to see that Erica Badu was vegan. I literally wasn't surprised. Like, I don't think anyone should be surprised. <laughs> Zelia Banks. <laughs> I wanted to include her on this list just because, I don't know. She does share like a lot of her meals on Instagram, so I think it's really interesting. But yeah, the next person on my list, I really don't give a shit about, and that's Ben Carson. He's been a vegetarian for decades, apparently, which... Ben! Oh my god. This man literally could have just peacefully died as a hero in the black community, as an icon in black history. And now all he'll be known for by most people is not entering the stage when he was supposed to and just being Donald Trump's nigger. That is his legacy now. No one gives a shit about his heart surgery. No one cares. Ben and his terrible singing wife, Jesus Christ. And the rocket the bombs burst. The next person on my list, shouldn't surprise you because he's been pretty outspoken on it, is Cory Booker. Also, he was just appointed to the Committee of U.S. Agriculture, I believe, which, in my opinion, is pretty iconic. And I think that Cory Booker is a complete cuck, and I think he's a pussy, and I'm not a huge fan of him. But I think it's really important to have someone that does care about the environment um, as much as he does on a committee like that. I don't know. I don't shame environmentalists for not being vegan, but I always, like if I ever meet AOC or Bernie Sanders, I think I would ask them like, would you guys go vegan for like a week or even a few days? Like, I feel like if they showed people how to go vegan or if they did like a vegan week challenge, I think that'd be so impactful. Cause y'all are the Green New Deal b bitches. Like if y'all are supposed to be out here talking about the Green New Deal, can you exercise the Green New Deal on your plate? Can you do that? I don't know. I mean, they're the environmentalist kings and queens. Like, you know, they're the poster children for recycling and Green New Deal. So maybe go vegan for a week and show your followers. I don't know, don't, you, don't do it for your whole life, fine. But go to your local bodega AOC and show us what you can get at your bodega that's vegan. You know, I just think that'd be so sick. Colin Kaepernick is vegan, which totally makes sense to me. You know, he's a huge, activist and he did a lot for the black lives matter movement and for black people in my opinion lizzo is also plant-based she has shared a lot of her plant-based recipes online and i really enjoy watching what she eats maybe one day i'll make a video on lizzo but i've been following lizzo for a really long time like since way before good as hell and truth hurts blew up and i'm so happy for her to see like where she is like it, it I used to be a fat, dark-skinned black girl and she gave me so much hope and life when I was a teenager and I'll always love and support her. I will defend my queen. I'm not like a huge stan or anything, but I'll defend her till the bitter, till the bitter ends. Like I will. I don't give a shit. You think she's annoying? I think you're fucking annoying. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, Lizzo. I love her. In conclusion. If you are black and you have watched this video and you are thinking about going vegan, but you're not sure, 
that's fine. That's where I was. I never thought I would be vegan at one point. And then I said, well, you know, I'll go vegan in the future once I have more money, once I'm more stable. I'll go vegan once I recover from my eating disorder. And I am not more financially stable. I am recovering from my eating disorder. I'm not fully recovered or anything like that. But and I'm but I'm vegan and I'm doing it. And I feel like if all it, like I think if I can go vegan, I really do think that most people can do it because I was someone that used to love me and I was someone that used to say I could never be vegan or vegetarian and I just never thought I would do it and um, so I feel like if I can do it, you can do it. You'd be joining a really fly community. Black vegans, like the Afro vegan community is lit as hell. We're all really cool people. We're all really rad. We all are beautiful. Our skin is popping. <laughs> Our food is amazing and we're sick and you should join us. <laughs> join us. No, I'm just kidding. I also think it'd be really cool to contribute to a world, like going vegan, you're saying that you would love to live in a world that is harm free and free of oppression and all beings are liberated. And even if we don't get to see that in our lifetimes and if that, even if that never happens, I think that's a really beautiful thing to stand up and say that that's something that you believe in and would love to see either way. I also think that you'd be taking back your health and changing the narrative on what it means to be a black person and eating and I think that it would be really cool for us to have more open discussions in our community about what we put on our plates, about community gardening, about like our history of all of these beautiful black activists that I mentioned that have really done amazing things like not just for animals but like for our own fucking people and to take those leaders and to put them, you know, as people we can look to for inspiration and for guidance, I think that's really valuable. It's, there's value in knowledge, whether it's knowing our history, whether it's knowing about nutrition you want to put on your plate, or whether it's knowing the truth about what big ag is doing to our planet and doing to humans. Knowledge gives you strength and it allows you to grow as a person and I really want to use my platform to show people that going vegan doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be this big thing. You can start off slowly. You can give up one thing at a time. That's what I did. And my intention wasn't going vegan in that. I was just giving up foods because they were making me feel sick. And eventually, here I am. Now I'm vegan. That is the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider checking out my Patreon or any of the links to my store or anything like that down below. Please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and things like that. And please check out the resources in the description. Um, I'm also going to put a playlist full of videos that I think are really good videos that showcase why you should go vegan if this video wasn't enough for you or if you're even more interested. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this video. Let me know what you guys thought about what I have to say. Um, I would just love to hear your guys' thoughts and comments. Thank you so much for watching. Um, have a wonderful Black History Month. Um, stay safe out there. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I will see you in the next one. Alrighty, y'all. Bye!